He's got the whole world in his hands, and aren't you so glad? And aren't you thankful that he does? And we can trust him in all things because of that. And that is a great thing. There are some folks in our church who have trusted God with their entire lives. They've asked Jesus to come into their hearts as their Lord and Savior. And they're celebrating today through the ordinance of baptism. So let's call our attention to the screens and let's watch and pray carefully. Good morning. In the first service, I baptized two adults. In this service, three children. What an exciting morning it has been. Wyatt Leith has just given his heart to Christ and is letting us know it by his baptism today. Jesus to you. Yes, my Lord. Wyatt, on your profession of faith in Jesus, it's with great joy I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism, rise to walk in newness of life. This is Annabelle Johns, and she also is trusting in Christ. Annabelle, who's Jesus to you? Here's my Lord. Annabelle, on your commitment to Jesus Christ and profession of faith, it's with great joy I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism, rise to walk in newness of life. Alexandra Myers, or Allie, you also have given your life to Jesus Christ. So who is Jesus to you? He is my Lord. Allie, on your profession of faith in Jesus, it's with great joy I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism, rise to walk in newness of life. Lord, we've done as you've commanded us, and still there is room. Let's worship together this morning by reading God's word together. Would you stand? The words are on the screen, and then we're just going to launch right in to joyful praise. Would you read the words with me on the screen? Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations.
love endures forever. His love endures forever. His love endures forever. His love endures forever. And that's the truth, isn't it? Would you take an opportunity now to greet those around you and welcome them to worship? We're glad you're here. Great singing. I hope you had a happy Thanksgiving, did you? Everybody have a good one? Well, you're here, and I'm glad you made it back from Grandma's house to be with us in worship today. A lot of our folks are out on 95 somewhere, probably stalled in traffic, trying to work their way back to us. We'll pray for them. Maybe they're watching. I hope maybe they're tuned in and streaming with us and singing along in the car. If you're our guest today, and I know we've got many throughout the room, you can help us by filling out the communication tab in your program. Tell us about yourself, and then uh, at the very end of the hour, put it in the offering plate so we'll know who you are. We'd, we'd like to know where you're from, and if we can help you in any way, we're certainly eager 
to do that. It's going to be a wonderful service today. I'm excited to uh, be with you through it today as we honor the Lord. Let's bow our heads together. Our Father and our God, we give you thanks for this day. Thank you for the privilege of gathering together after a long holiday season to worship. We pray that you'll be glorified in what we offer today. Be with those who are far away from us still on their way back home. Give them a safe journey. Those who are grieving, we pray comfort for them. And those who are sick, healing for their bodies. Lord, where there's a spiritual need, I pray you'll meet it. And where there is a physical need, great suffering going on all around our world, you would be there through your people to help bring light again. We give this hour to you now for your honor and glory, and we pray in Jesus' name, amen. I want you to listen to this song the choir is going to do. It's one of my favorites, and it's an adaptation from Psalm number 8. Listen carefully.
what a ma magnificent name the name of Jesus is. And he is great. And the scriptures tell us so much about the wondrous deeds of our Lord Jesus. And so we're going to proclaim him now in these next songs. We're going to talk about some of the things that he has done. He has done the things that you've, you can see and things that you can feel. Let's stand together and let's worship. I won't. 
God's people said, and thank you. Tell me what is his aim? Give us life right. I know a man who says we can know what God has planned for us all to be. I know a man who died upon a tree that we might live eternally. I know a man who died upon a tree that we might live eternally. Can you tell me his name? Jesus Christ, tell me what is his aim? Give us life right. I know a man who died upon a tree that we might live eternally. Tell me what is his aim? Jesus Christ, tell me what is his aim? Give us life right. I know a man who died upon a tree that we might live eternally. Can you tell me his name? Jesus Christ, tell me what is his aim? Give us life right. I know a man who died upon a tree that we might live eternally. Right. <laughs> That's the song you're going to have in your head the rest of the week. You'll be singing it. Thank you, guys. I hope it's as much fun to sing it as it is to hear it. What a joy. Clarence Darrow was the great uh, lawyer and outspoken atheist of the 1920s and 30s. During the Great Depression, he was in inner city Chicago for a community meeting at a church, an African-American church. And... Uh, he assumed that the people in that crowd would be angry at the poverty they were experiencing and sullen because of the prejudice that was so rampant in that day. But as he sat there and he heard the people singing, he couldn't imagine it. He couldn't understand the joy. When he got up to speak, he said, what in the world do you people have to sing about? And somebody stood up and said, we've got Jesus to sing about. And that's enough, isn't it? That's what we're singing about here. And we have that song in our hearts. Well, if this is Thanksgiving, that means Lottie Moon is just around the corner. Our emphasis at First Baptist on international missions. And sure enough, next week, December 3, is our annual March for Missions. The first day when we receive gifts for the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. Be praying about it. Come prepared, if you can, to share next week in that special offering. Take your Bibles now and turn to the book of Psalms. I'm finishing our series that's been a month-long series on being thankful people. We've looked at various Psalms to remind ourselves of those things for which we are grateful. And we come today to number 92. Find it on your uh, device or find it in the Bible you're holding in your lap or look up at the screen. Number 92. It is good to praise the Lord and to make music to your name, O Most High, to proclaim your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night to the music of the ten-string lyre and the melody of the harp. For you make me glad by your deeds, O Lord. I sing for joy at the works of your hands. How great are your works, O Lord. How profound your thoughts. The senseless man does not know. Fools do not understand that though the wicked spring up like grass and all evildoers flourish, they will be forever destroyed. But you, O Lord, are exalted forever. For surely your enemies, O Lord, surely your enemies will perish. All evildoers will be scattered. You have exalted my horn like that of a wild ox. 
Fine oils have been poured upon me. My eyes have seen the defeat of my adversaries. My ears have heard the rout of my wicked foes. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no wickedness in him. This is the word of the Lord for us today. Thanks be to God. Well, historians differ on when the first Thanksgiving actually occurred in the New World. I know what you learned in school, that it was in Massachusetts Colony in 1621, Governor William Bradford and the Pilgrims. And that may be true, but uh, Virginians have another idea. Virginians say, no, the first Thanksgiving was a few years earlier than that, December the 4th, 1619, when the ship, the Margaret, landed at Berkeley Plantation on the James River, 24 miles southwest of Richmond. Now, let me remind you, we are in Virginia. But then there are folks in Florida who say, no, you're wrong too. The first Thanksgiving in the New World happened on September the 8th, 1565, when Don Pedro Menendez de Avelis and 800 colonists celebrated in St. Augustine, Florida. Which is it? Turn to the person beside you and argue your case. Which do you think? I'll wait. I'll wait. You go ahead and start. All right, did we agree that it's Virginia? (laughs) No, actually, actually, it goes back further than that. And our psalm today gives us the answer. This is a Sabbath psalm, and it's the first of several in a row that would be sung in Sabbath worship from the Jewish people. The answer, though, is that every day is Thanksgiving Day. Every day. Psalm 118, verse 24. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We sometimes say that on Sundays, but you can say that every day. Every day, this is the day the Lord has made. Psalm 34, verse 1. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. And Paul wrote in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Give thanks always. Now, we've just come through Thanksgiving, so you've done it. You, you paused, you, you gave thanks to God. Here's what I'm saying to us today. Since you've started it, stick with the routine. The routine of Giving thanks to God. Now, I know what somebody will say. Routine? Is that the right word, Pastor? Doesn't routine suggest a ritual or doing something by rote, doing something without thinking? Isn't that a routine? No. A routine is part of the rhythm and regimen of your life. A routine is like uh, brushing your teeth every morning. It's like taking your vitamins or your meds. It's like uh, exercising. It's like getting up tomorrow, I hate to mention it, and going to school again. It's a routine, but it's what life is made of. Since you're already doing it, make daily Thanksgiving your routine. God demands it. We're told in Scripture, in Psalm number 92 and throughout the Bible, one of the Ten Commandments, it's from page to page, cover to cover in the Bible. God demands our worship. C.S. Lewis used to be bothered by that. He was concerned that God evidently was so insecure and needy and self-centered that we had to always be telling him how great he is. And then one day, Lewis realized that we're the ones who need this. We're the ones who need to give 
thanksgiving to God. What other response can there possibly be? In the presence of his greatness and glory, his majesty, and in the face of all he's done for us. What other response is there but praise and thanksgiving? A holy wow, God, at what you have done. When are we supposed to offer this thanksgiving? Faithful Muslims worship and pray five times every day. They were worshiping on Friday in Sinai when so many hundreds of them were shot and killed. We ought to be concerned about that. They lost their lives going about their worship. Well, they they pray five times a day. How about you, Christian? How many times do you stop and pray and thank God for what he's given to you? How many times a day do you check your email or check your Facebook just to see if there are any updates, just to see if somebody's responded to what you said, just to see if something urgent is coming over We do it all day long. Whenever there's time, we grab it a moment here and a moment there. How about praising God? Now, the psalm gives us the answer. Look at it in verse 1. It is good to praise the Lord, to make music to your name, O Most High. Verse 2, to proclaim your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. Well, that's, that's a suggestion right there. Why not do it at least twice every day? In the morning... And then in the evening, in the morning, before your feet hit the floor, you've hit the snooze once, but now it's ringing again, so you got to get up. But before your feet hit the floor, lay there and thank God for what he's done for you in the past and invite him into your day. He lives in your heart. God's going to be around, but invite his presence in your day. And then at the end of the day, your faithfulness every night. Again, you're in the bed just before you go to sleep. Rehearse, remember, remind yourself of all that God did for you during the day. And you'll have to think about it because sometimes God is working almost in disguise and you don't see it when it's happening. But if you'll stop at the end of the day and look back, You'll be able to see that he was in this interaction. He was in that conversation. He was in that moment. And you can see it now. His faithfulness to you. So thank him for it. Somebody told Audrey me early in our marriage that uh, one of the best ways to aid communication in marriage at the end of the day when, when husband and wife get back together to ask each other, tell me five things that happened to you today and how you felt about them. So the very next day, I come home and Audrey hits me with that. Okay, Don, tell me five things that happened to you today and how you felt about it. See, a man can, he can remember things that happened, but he doesn't think much about feelings. So you got to think about how you felt. Well, when she asked me, I suddenly remembered that that morning, early that morning, in the mall parking lot, I had struck another car. It wasn't serious. Neither car was uh, damaged, but I did it. And I'd forgotten all about it. Don, how did you feel about it? Well, I was afraid. I thought, oh my goodness, what have I done? But I'd have forgotten all about it. If she just said, Don, how was your day? I'd have said, fine. And that would have been the end of the conversation. When you come to the end of your day, instead of just saying, thank you, God, for today, have him show you specific things that happened in your day. It's amazing. When you're looking for it, when you're looking for the fingerprints of God on your day, you can find them. So, at least morning and evening, give him praise. And do it, the psalm says, do it with music. To make music to your name, O most high. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19 and 20. Speak to one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Sing and make melody in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do it with a song. That's why I was talking this morning about we've got Jesus to sing about. We've we've got all that he's done for us. Who has more of a reason to sing than Christian people? A melody in our hearts giving thanks and praise 
to God. We ought to do it all day long. Remember David when he brought the Ark of the Covenant and into the city of Jerusalem and with music and he got to dancing. He was so excited and he's even doing cartwheels with joy. He was criticized for it, but he did it because that was the only response that fit the occasion. Do it with music. Johann Sebastian Bach with his musical manuscripts, he would, on the front page, the first page, he would write the initials of the expression, Jesus, help me. And then on the last page, at the end of it, he would put the initials, SDG, Solo Deo Gloria, to God alone be the glory. That was his art, and he was using it for the glory of God. What's your art what do you enjoy doing? What talent do you have? Maybe it's singing or uh, sculpting or writing or performing in some way. Maybe it's poetry. Maybe it's sculpting. Something God has given you the ability to do. Woodworking, carving, whatever it is, do it as unto the Lord as an expression of praise and thanksgiving. Now, do you know the reason for doing this? why we should do this. Well, we praise him for the beauty and intricacy of his work. Look at verse 4 of Psalm 92. For you have made me glad by your deeds, O Lord. I sing for joy at the works of your hands. How great are your works, O Lord. How profound your thoughts. So you consider biology and astronomy, and mathematics, and the precision of those sciences, and you see the hand of God behind it. Praise him for the beauty and intricacy of his creation. Maybe you traveled this week, and you went someplace you'd never been before, and it was beautiful. God created this wonderful universe and this particular planet where we live, and he wants us to take care of it. We're responsible to be good stewards of our planet Earth, but God gave it to us. Reason enough to praise him. Sir Christopher Wren was the great British architect. He's the one who designed and renovated, really built St. Paul's Cathedral in London with the big dome and all the rest of it. Maybe you've been there. It's a beautiful structure. He said, that will be the monument to my life. Well, when it was completed, he took the Queen of England on a tour of St. Paul's Cathedral. He wanted to show it off for her. He wanted to show her what he had done. And when they'd finished the tour, she said, well, it, it is awful. It's artificial. It's amusing. Well, I'd have been devastated, but Sir Christopher Wren smiled and said, thank you so much, your majesty. It's a different way of speaking in those days. When she said, it is awful, what she meant was, it's awe-inspiring. When she said, it's artificial, what she meant was, it's artistic, it's a work of art. And when she said, it's amusing, what she meant was, it is amazing. Well, that's a man-made cathedral. God has given us this world, and when we look at it, we can only praise him. Now, the, the senseless, dullard, the uneducated person has a harder time with this. Look at, uh, look at verse 6. What I mean is the more educated you are, the more you ought to worship him. The senseless man does not know Fools do not understand. You see, if, if you study science, when you study uh, the arts and, and you know the world in which you live, you've got more reasons in your arsenal, more reasons to give him praise. Now, just being educated is not enough. You can be the smartest person in the room today and not know God at all. It's not just being educated, but being educated with a purpose. Bertrand Russell, the, the atheistic philosopher, he didn't believe in God, and he was highly educated. A woman asked him once, well, Bertrand Russell, suppose there is a God. Suppose you're wrong, and one day you die, and you're standing before him. What are you going to say? Bertrand Russell thought about it for a moment, and he said, I would say, God you gave us insufficient evidence. 
No. Psalm 19, verse 1, the heavens declare the glories of God. It's all around you if you're looking, but you got to look. So use that education you've got. See the beauty and precision of what God has made, and there's no other explanation than God did this. So we praise him for his creation, and we thank him for his provision for our needs. Look at verse 10. You have exalted my horn like that of a wild ox. Fine oils have been poured upon me. Just like Psalm 23. We go through green meadows. We lounge beside still waters. He restores our soul. He leads us in the paths of righteousness. All the days of our lives, God takes care of us. Every need supplied, God is there for us. Reason enough to give him thanksgiving. Now, you can expect, when you do this and make it your routine, you can expect a certain result from regular thanksgiving, a certain result. Look at uh, verse 12. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon planted in the house of the Lord. That reminds me of Psalm number one. Just like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Reminds me of Psalm number one. Planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green. Proclaiming the Lord is upright. He is my rock And there is no wickedness in him. What can you expect from a life of daily thanksgiving? You can expect, number one, to flourish. To flourish. A full and wonderful life. You won't always see in the moment. And it will be different for you, the person beside you. But your life will flourish because it will have the hand of God upon it. He inhabits the praises of his people and he'll be with you in a way he would not be with you otherwise. When praise is on your lips, you'll flourish. And more than that, people will want to be around you. When you have the reputation of being a positive, thankful person, you're always thanking God and you're always thanking people for the things they do for you. You're grateful. And somebody once said, if, if you don't express gratitude, do you really feel it? Do you really feel it if you don't express it? When you are known as a person who is always grateful, people will be drawn to you. Your life will flourish. But then he says, number two, you will be fruitful. Fruitful, the fruits of the Spirit, Jesus in your life, but also the way you have influenced other people. That will be fruit you are bearing in your Christian life. Even in old age, even after retirement, even after you've done your part, all the way to the end of your life, you can still be bearing fruit. And isn't it wonderful when you realize, and it doesn't happen every day, but when you realize, yes, my life has counted for something. Yes, I I, I didn't pass this way for no purpose. Yes, I did touch a life here and there and pointed them toward God. That is fruitfulness. And it comes to those who are thankful. You've already started, so don't quit now. Keep going with it. Make it your daily routine to pause in the morning and in the evening and any time in between to give thanks to God. Let's pray. Would you bow with me? In the first service, we had two couples, four adults, came to join their lives with ours. They wanted to be a part of us. And I I have to think there's somebody here in the room now who would love to be a part of our church. We invite you to join us. You saw some folks get baptized this morning and maybe you've never been baptized and you'd like to get in on that the next go round. We would encourage you to do it, to profess your faith. If you're ready for the first time to put your faith in Christ today, to trust him as your savior, You come and we'll show you how to do that too. Lord, thank you for this time in your word and this time of worship today. Now, grant boldness and courage to respond to what we've heard 
and to join our lives and in, in, in to something that is meaningful and will change destiny. I pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Let's stand and we say. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given pray with me, please. Lord, we just thank you for this time to give thanks, and we pray that you'll help us to give thanks every day, to be aware of your care all through the day, and to recognize your faithfulness. We pray that you'll just help us to strive to, uh, to walk with you all day long, and then we can proclaim your presence and share our witness uh, to your power with others, Lord. We just pray that uh, uh, you'll take our tithes and offerings, and that you'll bless them for your glory, Lord. And keep us safe and healthy until next week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus said, as the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Not just a couple of you, but all of you. God's still calling people. He hasn't stopped. Not just to be pastors, not just to be teachers, not just to be local missionaries, but to reach all the nations. We can do all things through Christ, but we have to choose to do exactly what he's asking us to do. We realize that we cannot do it alone. God calls me to be obedient, calls us to be obedient. But really, the work is totally dependent upon Him and what He has planned. People are coming in and they're seeing new life. They're seeing people who've been changed by the gospel. Someone from every tribe, every tongue, and every nation will be at the foot of Jesus. 
This is, this is living. This is joy. This is satisfaction. This is reward. This is what we were created for. It's what we're wired by God to do. And it's when we do that that, yes, we'll risk certain things in this world, but we'll realize real quickly that the risk is far outweighed by the reward. Yeah, it's time for the Lady Moon Christmas offering next week. And every dollar given goes to international missionaries and their work around the world. None of it stays here. Our goal this year is a gargantuan $250,000. Huge goal, but it's possible. We can do it if we will give sacrificially. We won't do it all in one day, but... As the month of December rolls out, I believe we can meet that goal. But next Sunday is when we start, and it's with the March for Missions. And if you're new to our church and you don't know what that is, here's what it is. Early in the service next week, both services, our children will come down the aisle, all the aisles, bearing the flags of the nations. And when they all get in place, then we'll invite you to come. And there'll be more lines this time to various containers where you can drop your gift for the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. If you give online, you'll probably still do that, but you come and join us in the March anyway. If you're not prepared to give next week, you're going to give later, but you can't give next week, come on anyway and march with us because it's a beautiful demonstration of the heartbeat of our church. And nobody knows what goes into the plates anyway. Just come and join with us in the exuberance of this act of giving. Now, this week, be in prayer with your family about what you can do and then, uh, and then give more than that because we always think about what we can make sense of, we can figure out. Maybe God is leading us to do even more. So that's next Sunday and then all through the month of December. If you're our guest today, stop by first stop over there. There's Wayne Jenkins waving at you. He'll be in first stop. If you've got questions about our church, things you'd like to know more about, he can, he's got all the answers, and he can help you uh, know what's, what's coming up. Okay? December's going to be exciting. Come and be a part of all of it. Next Sunday also, and I didn't mention this in the first service, next Sunday we'll be giving you a copy of the proposed budget for for 2018. We'll discuss it next Sunday evening at 6 o'clock or 6.15 if you've got questions. I don't think you will because it's, it's basically the same budget but just a little less. We're, we're paring it down to, to meet uh, the needs of our, of our church. But if you have questions, you can come to that session. And then the following Sunday morning, the 10th, we will vote to adopt that budget as our ministry blueprint for the next year. Okay, let's all stand together. I'll be at the back to greet you. If, if you want to see me, I'll be happy to talk to you there. Have a blessed day in Jesus. Thank you.